Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, a glorified cockfight. That's how the former Prime Minister of Belgium has described the EU referendum tussle between David Cameron and his old friend, the Justice Secretary, Michael Gove. Mr Gove dismissed the Prime Minister's claim that his renegotiation deal was legally binding and irreversible. The Attorney General immediately came out to say that the Justice Secretary was wrong, but he in turn was contradicted by a junior Justice Minister. Our political editor Gary Gibbon reports on a day when the battle lines within the Conservative Party were on full display. The Prime Minister in Brussels proclaimed his deal legally watertight. His Justice Ministers say he's got it wrong. In Brussels today, the man who chaired last week's talks on the negotiations, President, European Council President, President Donald European Tusk, Parliament. told the European Parliament European David Cameron was right. The decision concerning a new settlement is in conformity with the treaties and cannot be annulled by the European Court of Justice. Donald Tusk was trying to help David Cameron out as his justice ministers were taking on both the Prime Minister and other government ministers, effectively suggesting that they were straining the truth. Now, David Cameron's told the ministers they're not allowed to disagree in the same room or the same studio. Blue on blue action, as number 10 calls it. And that's effectively what you're seeing in these opening stages of the campaign. So, as part of an occasional service, we're bringing them together for you. When I said I wanted reforms that are legally binding and irreversible, that is what I've got. It's important that we recognise that until there is what the Prime Minister has called full-on treaty change, that the European Court of Justice is not bound by this agreement. Number 10 rubbished that and two more members of the government went into battle against each other. The suggestion that this agreement doesn't have legal force until it's incorporated into EU treaties is not correct. I've got the EU's own legal advice here and it makes clear that the British deal is, for the most part, a fairly general set of expectations. It's not the kind of enforceable guarantee you'd get if you buy a dishwasher and it breaks down and you want your money back. Adding to the drama of it all, Michael Gove's wife, Sarah Vine, wrote in the Daily Mail of the couple's torture and agony at the idea that their friendship with the Camerons might be damaged or over because of the referendum split. And things got personal in the House of Commons as well. Jeremy Corbyn, speaking about the NHS rather than Europe, alluded to cuts in Oxfordshire Council. And that's where members of David Cameron's family have been weighing in against cutbacks. Will the chair of the Oxford anti-austerity campaign be writing another letter to himself asking his local, uh, asking on behalf of his constituents for the health secretary to intervene and support his local NHS? I'm very proud of the NHS in Oxfordshire and everyone who works in it. Labour MPs heckled the Prime Minister, ask his mum. I'll ask my mother. Oh, I think I know what my mother would say. I think she'd look across the dispatch box and she'd say, put on a proper suit, do up your tie and sing the national anthem. <laughs> Mr Speaker, if we're talking of motherly advice, my late mother would have said, stand up for the principle of a health service free at the point of use. The day started with another letter drafting in non-politicians, this time retired military chiefs, urging Britain to stay in the EU. Four former chiefs of the defence staff were amongst 13 signatories, but within hours, one, General Sir Michael Rose, said his name should not have been on the letter as he'd never signed up to it. Tory MPs for leave were on parade today, nearly half the parliamentary party. This evening there was a launch of Conservatives in. A few lonely stalwarts who've been pumping the pro-Europe message now enlarged by Tory MPs who simply fear the alternative. Did you agonise over this one? Not much. Not much? Is it all going to be happy families, the other side of this? Uh, really happy families. Really happy families. Mrs Gove is saying in the Daily Mail it's agony and torture. <laughs> well, much as I love Michael, it probably is agony and torture being Mrs Gove. <laughs> Don't go for that great leap in the dark. Take this argument round the country and we will win it. Thank you. The Prime Minister trying to rally his half of the parliamentary party. Many of them, like him, self-proclaimed sceptics, learning to cheer for something 
they've spent years deriding. Gary Gibbon reporting. I've been getting away with it all my life.